I have the honor, the distinct honor, of presenting the Distinguished Service Award this year. And it is my distinct privilege to have the honor to award Emily A. Parker of Dallas, Texas, the Distinguished Service Award for the ABA Tax Section. And this award recognizes those who combined an outstanding career in tax law while setting standards for all tax lawyers to emulate. I've had the good fortune to know Emily since the early 2000s when she served as Deputy Chief Counsel at the IRS, and then she was Acting Chief Counsel. And I admire Emily for your intelligence, for your legal skills, for your common sense, and for your no-nonsense direct approach in dealing with people and solving problems. And oftentimes, I have to say, I was on the receiving end of that no-nonsense direct approach in dealing with people and with solving problems. But I cannot do Emily justice. You have to read the write-up. You have to read the write-up about Emily by Mary McNulty and Lee Meyercord, and that's at each of your tables. It does, it'll do much better description of all the wonderful qualities of Emily than I could possibly do. Emily's legal career goes back to 1973 when she became the first woman attorney at the Dallas firm of Thompson and Knight. She was promoted to partner in 1979. She rose to various leader positions at the firm and ultimately became the firm's managing partner. She's had a highly successful career and has earned a national reputation as a tax litigator. We are fortunate to have Emily as an active member of the tax section. She served as chair of the National, National Natural Resources Committee and vice chair of the appointments to the tax court committee. She served as a director on the tax section's council, a vice chair of professional services, and a vice chair of government relations. Emily has also been a frequent speaker at tax section meetings, and she gave the 2016 Erwin Griswold lecture before the American College of Tax Council. In addition to her ABA tax section service, Emily has held leadership posts in the Dallas and Texas Bar Associations. In 2012, the tax section of the State Bar of Texas gave her its highest honor, naming her an outstanding Texas tax lawyer. Emily also has proudly served the Dallas-Fort Worth community, working especially with organizations advocating for children's issues. She's also a founding member of the Women's Foundation of Dallas. She also serves her law school alma mater, Southern Methodist University, as a member of the executive committee of the Denman School of Law. For Emily's outstanding legal career, for her pioneering efforts on behalf of women, for her service to the government, for her contributions to the tax section and other professional organizations, and for her service to her community, it is my pleasure and my honor to present the American Bar Association's highest honor, the Distinguished Service Award, to Emily A. Parker. Emily. Thank you, Eric. I would have edited his remarks, but he wouldn't share them with me in advance. But I'm truly honored to receive the ABA Tax Section Distinguished Service Award. It is, however, humbling to be included on the list with all the prior recipients. Uh, I can't help but wonder why I was selected, and some of you may be thinking the same thing. <laughs> um, well, 
I will not attempt to answer that question today. In the few minutes that they have given me, uh, I think that would be really boring. When I was a child, I would whine to my mother, I'm bored, like children often do. And she would immediately respond, well, you must be really boring. <laughs> Only years later did I realize she was telling me that I needed to entertain myself, and if I couldn't, then I must be really boring. So, in a sense, not being boring has been one of my lifelong goals. Now, that may sound strange coming from someone who chose to be a tax lawyer. I, can, I have found over my life that telling someone you're a tax lawyer is a guaranteed cocktail party conversation stopper. <laughs> my life story, however, is really boring. I, I had a wonderful childhood, went to school, got a job, worked hard, and prospered. I participated in professional and civic activities, aggressively represented my clients, mostly rich folks in large corporations, and for a short period, the Internal Revenue Service. Rather than talk about that, I want to talk about some people who have inspired me during my life and career. Thus, I have entitled my remarks here today, All My Heroes Are Tax Lawyers Except My Mother. Now, the term hero is often misused, although one of my tax lawyer heroes is, in fact, heroic. You may be surprised to know that there are actually several tax lawyers in the movies. Paul Newman played a tax lawyer in The Young Philadelphian, and tax was a pivotal plot point in the movie. I commend the movie to you. In The Firm, Tom Cruise plays a tax lawyer, criminal, balancing his criminal clients against legal ethics. And in the recent movie, On the Basis of Sex, Army Hammer plays our friend Marty Ginsburg, who was the recipient of the 2006 award. With all these tax lawyer heroes in the movies, you'd think more young lawyers would want to be tax lawyers. My personal tax lawyer heroes, though, are real tax lawyers. I became a tax lawyer in 1975 because J. Waddy Bullion needed a new associate, and he chose me. Waddy was not easy to work for. He was brilliant and demanding, but he was also generous. I learned to be a tax lawyer. And more importantly, I learned to be a lawyer working with and for Wadi Bullion. During this period and later, I, re I relied upon Buford Berry, also a tax lawyer at Thompson and Knight, to support and guide me. And I needed a lot of guidance. Both Wadi and Buford are now deceased, but there is another Thompson and Knight tax lawyer who is my hero. And who is here today, and that's Mary McNaught. Now, Mary is my hero because she has effectively balanced having a successful legal career with marriage and two wonderful daughters. Also, as a tax lawyer, she has strengths that I do not have, and so she always makes me look good. See, she also has put up with me for over 30 years, and that is truly heroic work. There are two other real tax lawyer heroes I want to recognize. Bill Linden, now deceased, was a partner at Vincent Elkins. He inspired me to think of greater things than my career and the tax law. In a different way, I learned from B. John Williams and his aggressive approach to each issue and problem, especially when I worked for him as his deputy and when he was chief counsel. Finally, last but not least, there is the tax lawyer I never knew who is truly heroic, Sergei Magnitsky. Magnitsky was a tax, Russian tax lawyer who died at the hands of Russian law enforcement 
because he uncovered the largest tax fraud history uh, in history of Russia. After reading Bill Browder's account of Magnitsky's bravery in the book Red Notice, I am humbled. My small acts of professional courage and bravery, mostly consisting of telling my clients and potential clients that their abusive tax shelters would not work. <laughs> and then when I was at the IRS pursuing tax shelter promoters, these acts of tax bravery are totally inconsequential by comparison because Mag Magnitsky died for his ethics. As the title of this presentation highlights, though, my non-tax lawyer hero is my mother. A fishing story explains my mother. She loved to fish, and she was very proud of her fishing prowess. When she was 85 years old, we were at a trout fishing camp, and we were having a fishing contest, and she was way behind. And she finally caught a brown trout. Well, a brown trout would take her over the top in the contest if it were a keeper. But a brown trout, to be a keeper, has to be at least 16 inches long. My scientist brother is carefully measuring the brown trout on the dock, and it's not quite 16 inches long. And my mother's clearly exasperated by him and by this, and she looks up at me and says, just step on it. <laughs> well, I did, and it was 16 inches long, and she won the contest. This story reflects my mother's wit, optimism, and competitiveness that continue to inspire me years after her death. I hope that I have been a good role model to young lawyers, and especially young tax lawyers, in the same way that so many people have inspired and supported me in my career. You know, we may never actually know when we have been a force for good or evil, or a role model for good or evil uh, to others. I know that I have personally been changed by a conversation with a total stranger on an airplane and by a 30-minute job interview. And I can assure you, since I started practicing law in 1973, I experienced some not so encouraging job interviews. Uh, and I doubt that the people that I encountered either on the airplane or in the job interview even remember me or remember those conversations with me, but they impacted me. Now, the commissioner assured me that that would not be a problem if I ran over into his time. <laughs> but I somehow know that this audience isn't here to hear me. Uh, but as I conclude, I want to thank my friends and colleagues and current and former clients who have joined me here today. And we had a fun dinner last night, and it was so nice to see especially uh, current and former clients come out, uh, all those rich folks and big corporations <laughs> do have hearts. And I also want to extend a special thank you to my legal assistant of over 37 years, Lindy Kopp, who is here today. <laughs> Finally, I want to thank, of course, the tax section for giving me this award and the opportunity to recognize and thank my heroes. I just hope I haven't been boring. <laughs>